Good morning, and now we have Wong Wei Yi, General Manager of Fund Supermarket Malaysia, to talk about how Budget 2016 will impact the markets. Uh, good morning, uh, Wong. Uh, what kind of uh, focus do you think the government would have in this budget? Hi, good morning. I think the uh, government is really trying to focus on maintaining uh, fiscal discipline and having a uh, budget deficit closer to 3%. And I think um, if you look at the oil prices, um, it's very low. Revenue from petroleum component forms a major part of the government revenue. So with oil prices staying low, below the government's projection for a good part of this year, and in 2006, 2016, uh, oil prices are also expected to stay low, I think there will be downside pressure to revenue. Uh, what's the outlook for fixed income asset classes? Do you expect some further outflows from foreign investors to hit the fixed income sector? Uh, I think despite the selling pressure from foreign investors uh, for this year, Malaysian bonds have delivered positive returns of 2.7% as at the end of uh, September. Foreign investors have been selling out of Malaysian fixed income markets, largely spooked by the sharp drop in ringgit caused by previous expectations of Fed rate hike. But we don't think that the uh, sharp fall is reflective of economic fundamentals, even though Malaysia is facing some uh, slowdown in economic conditions. So there is this risk of downgrade, but uh, even uh, looking at current environment, I think the yields are still very attractive for investment grade rated bonds. And with the delaying of Fed rate hike, foreign investors might be coming back to Asian region to look for higher yields again. In fact, in September, we have seen an inflow back into Malaysian bonds. Given the challenging economic conditions in Malaysia, uh, how do you think sh uh, investors should position themselves? I think on a year-to-date basis, yeah, it has been challenging. KLCI has fallen about 3%, one of the worst performers in the region. Corporate earnings are expected to decline 3% for the uh, index for 2015. Uh, given the challenging economic outlook, we've slowed down in the global economic growth. In the near term, we do not see any positive catalyst. However, valuations after the fall have become more reasonable at 16.6 times for 2015 and 15.2 times, uh, times next year. I, I believe investors should be very selective in the sectors that they invest in. A key team would be to focus on beneficiaries, of a weakened ringgit. Companies who are exporters with overseas revenue streams are going to benefit from possibly more competitive pricing as well as translation gains. Hospitality sector would be another one uh, investors should look out for because uh, more tourists would be expected to come in along with the weakened ringgit. Right. Um, other than hospitality and, and some other sectors, do you think uh, the commodity sector would be a, a good area for investors to look at? I think uh, commodities area is uh, one area which is uh, still quite tough, especially those focused on the petroleum, etc., uh, the sectors. The main reason is because uh, right now we are still seeing that uh, supplies are outstripping the demand. If we have economic conditions uh, globally slow down some more, I think uh, the demand is not going to be there, while supplies are going to be there. So that will add downwards, uh, downside pressure uh, to companies focused in this sector. Uh, China has been uh, focused uh, very much on the headlines these days. How do you think uh, China has the view on uh, this part of the world? Uh, for China market, China is one of the market that uh, we are we, we feel quite still quite positive. Uh, off from its uh, April's peak, I think uh, the headshares have receded close to twenty percent. We believe the fundamentals of Chinese equity markets remains intact, and the recent sell off, uh, you know, on expectation of China's hard head lending is somehow overdone, we think that this is a good entry point for investors to go and look into China shares again. All right, uh, moving along to Singapore. Singapore narrowly avoided a technical recession on GDP numbers. Um, do you think uh, for the fourth quarter will be any worse? I, uh, if we look at the policy statements, MAS did not revise uh, growth targets. Singapore will be on track for 2 to 2.5% GDP growth this year. So we are expecting modest growth in fourth quarter of 2015. On a year-on-year -year basis, consensus is expecting 2.4% growth, which will be stronger than quarter three numbers. Right. Uh, the Singapore dollar is strengthening against regional currencies like the rupiah and ringgit, and this might uh, affect their export revenue. Do you think uh, MAS will take any proactive measures to actually manage this situation? I think the monetary authority of uh, Singapore has already eased its monetary policy two times this year. Although in the latest policy announcement, uh, where 
uh, analysts were expecting the rate of uh, appreciation or more aggressive easing from Mars didn't really happen. So while easing of uh, the Sing dollar may more aggressively may help export dependent Singapore, but given that you know the whole Asian region's currencies have also fallen, I don't think a weaker currency can help much to boost the export competitiveness of Singapore products. Uh, moreover, Singapore imports almost everything. A weaker currency would definitely risk imported inflation. So in Singapore's case, I think we probably have to look more at uh, fiscal policy driving economic r- growth rather than expecting more aggressive easing on the monetary policy. For the final year push, uh, which sectors do you think will see some growth um, and why? Uh, well, the last quarter, uh, we probably have uh, we'll see some growth in the banking sector. We are, we are seeing some slow rate of growth in loans, but we believe that will be offset by increased interest income uh, due to rising interest rates. So banks will benefit from that. And typically in the last quarter, you have uh, more traveling. So airline companies uh, should be able to benefit, especially when energy prices have remained low for almost a year. And there are quite some companies in Singapore's property sector that have exposure to China's real estate. So they should be able to benefit as well because uh, we note that China's central bank has been uh, cutting interest rates uh, throughout the year. And recently in August, they have eased some property purchasing rules. So that will be beneficial for the property sector in Singapore. Right. Uh, thank you, Wei Yi. That was Wong Wei Yi, the General Manager of Fund Supermart Malaysia.